why are they called trans words in Spanish? It's because they're from Greek. And I was like, <gasps> is it because they're all gay femboys? <laughs> I was going to say, no, you, 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 you triggered a memory for me. There's that scene in Father Ted where the woman's going all racist and stuff. It's like, as long as I can have a go at the Greeks, they invented gayness. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. Sorry, there's like something floating. Oh. I'm trying to grab. You got you floaties see. in I'm your I'm not eye. crazy. You have like, schizophrenia, John. <laughs> I, I know it looks like it, John, but Pipkin Pippa is not on the other side of the room. Ugh. <laughs> 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 oh. Oh, we also we also have our hot boy appreciator, Chinoda. There was a lot of good looking boys this season, and woo, lady. I'm lady. assuming by this season you're talking about the fall season or the summer season that just ended. Summer season that just ended. Okay, okay, okay. Got to specify because it is the fall season when this comes out now. <laughs> um, How many yes, hot the boys are there. What? There was a lot of them in o Oshinoko. Oh! <laughs> that is true. That is true. There's a lot... Well, actually, there's a lot of pretty character designs in general in Oshinoko. Uh, I mean, it's it's an anime about, like, showbiz. The entertainment and industry? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, pretty oh, oh, Pretty biased towards having pretty people. And there was 9S also, so can't forget yes, that. Yes, 9S. Let's go. <sighs> good boy. Very, very good boy. Um, we will We will get to that at a future uh, spoiler cast, but tonight the three Maybe. of us have gotten together because uh, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm not putting the cart before the horse. We plan to do it, uh, <laughs> but tonight we've gotten together to do a spoiler cast for the second season of Oshinoko, uh, which just ended. Uh, in fact, it had to go overtime. Uh, it's, final episode came out a week late. Was it yeah. a little over a week late? Yeah, a week late. <clears throat> um, so it kind of pushed back when we could actually record this. Um, uh, so, Bye. uh, Sorry about that, but it was outside of our control. Um, but yeah, let's let's actually get into it. Uh, this season was produced by Doga Kobo, same as the first season. Um, Doga, Doga Kobo, a studio that's known for anime like New Game, Gabriel Dropout, Plastic Memories, and airing concurrently with this season of Oshinoko, uh, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. Yeah, it's crazy that they've grown big enough to do two anime of the same season yes and it's another anime that um a lot of people were talking about i don't know if it was for the best reasons sometimes but it was for the best seasons ever yeah. forever listen i can appreciate all the feet shots we got okay i can appreciate uh, that at least not what i'm talking about but sure buddy you do you <laughs> listen i'm Don't not leaning into the meme okay i know the sister wants to fuck her brother <laughs> she Yoga doesn't kobo is a pretty decent studio when it comes to maintaining a good cute art style in my opinion like yes i may not like alia uh sometimes hides her feelings in russian because what's the point in we all know who's gonna get picked at the end of this it's gonna be alia so yes what's the her point name's in, in the fucking title the so her I, name I don't is understand. in the fucking title like i don't what's the point in watching a rom-com if you know who's gonna get selected you know it doesn't matter who you think should win the waifu war we know who ready wins from rip so exactly that's like know. saying you don't know who's gonna win in haruhi her name's in the fucking title <laughs> <laughs> fuck even in uh the disappearance of whatever nagi um oh a disappearance of nagi Yuta not Nagato Yuki, Jesus Christ! Yeah, I can't <laughs> in a disappearance of Nagato Yuki, Haruhi still wins. So. Exactly. <laughs> Even when her name's not in the title, she still wins. Jesus Christ! Uh, Haruhi wins. Period. Come I on, agree, though. Doga Kobo, Doga Kobo really has a consistency when it comes to character design. Um, yeah, like Game really... Dropout and New Game have really cute character design. Yes, they're really good I, at that. Listen, fucking fucking season three of New Game win Doga Kobo. I'm fucking you fuckers. <laughs> honestly <laughs> uh they make really good um outline character designs like you could just look at an outline and you're like i know that character silhouette designs silhouette yeah that's what I'm, that's the word i'm yeah. looking for thank you yeah um yeah 
for for some of their character designs. Um, I I just think generally they're really good at translating art designs from manga or character oh, designs from manga true. a lot. Oh yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of the same with Oshinoko from what I've seen. I have not like extensively read the manga, but I've seen enough panels from the manga to know what the basic character designs are in there. Um, this season um was directed by Daisuke uh Hiramaki who also directed the first season. Um, and music also uh, done by Takaru Iga, who did the first season as well. Also did the music for uh, Suhiga Kire and Magical Girl Raising Project. Listen, I know it sucks, but I like that anime, okay? <laughs> I know it sucks, but I like it. Um, one thing I definitely want to talk about before we get into the actual meat and potatoes of this season is the OP and ED. Because it's something we talked about a lot for the first season of Oshinoko is how good its OP was. Um, Idol by Yoasobi. Now, John, Fucking I know you're, an, you're a Yoasobi uh, simp. <laughs> Listen, I thought the OP this season was okay. <clears throat> like, uh, Fatal by Gem. Gem? G-E-M-N, G- G- however you yeah. pronounce it. Gemini, 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 um, I thought it was okay. Like, I, I don't like the beginning part of the OP where it's like, dun, 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 dun. and then they go, dun, 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 The falsetto part, It's though. like, yeah, like, the first two parts, like, it's like the rapping part, then there's the switch up. When they do the singing falsetto chorus part, though, that part, I'm just like, yes, I yeah. like this. The poppy part. That was like... And you get into it like... I was like, it took me like 10 episodes to really get like, you know what? I'm okay with it. Not because I'm a Yo Asobi simp. I, I, I have to... You are, I though. have an extreme Yo Asobi bias. That is true. <laughs> mm-hmm. I absolutely love Idol. But I don't think it was that. I, I honestly thought it was that for the first like six episodes where I'm like... It's not as good as Idol. I don't like this OP. Because I'm like, this is how it is. If it's not as good as the previous one, like, why did you even change it? Should have just kept it. Just yeah. should, should have asked Joe <laughs> Sobi to make another one. <laughs> like, or do, like, a remix of it or, like, a self-cover or whatever. Or listen, an alternate take. We can hate on Log Horizon as much as we want, but they knew that they couldn't top database. So they just no, used they, they, two they, seasons listen, in a row. They, knew, they, they inherently knew that they had struck gold, and they weren't even going to try to surpass it. And I absolutely applaud them for that because they were right. Uh, Can I ask yeah. you something though, John? Well, both of you okay. taking taking this OP like in a vacuum. If if say Idol never existed and you didn't have that to compare it to, how do you? What do you actually think about this OP like by itself without comparing it to Idol? I think that uh, visually it's really great. It's it's a lot better so. than the first one in my opinion. Um, it's yeah. like a lot more well animated, a lot more things we can see in it. Uh, the song itself is okay. Like it's, it's not my favorite. Like I, I downloaded it to listen to the full song and I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll just listen to the, the TV size <laughs> instead of the full song. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about because everything else past what you see on the, on the, the actual anime is like, eh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I haven't even listened to the full song. I've only the full watched song the is nothing version. special, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, so for me, uh, same as John, uh, I think the visuals themselves are friggin' fantastic. Like I absolutely love them. Um, yeah, like the part where eyes dancing, like dun, 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 dun. doing actual, no, it's like oh my god, it's so yeah. cool, <laughs> doing actual it's, idol dances. Yeah, <laughs> but then the song, I'm just like. It's okay. Like I can, I, I can, I can fuck to it a little bit, but it's just okay. It's not I, I something like... I'll go back for. It's something I'll listen to once or twice and then yeah. skip the rest of the time. This is something. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll listen to it while I'm watching the show. But unlike Idol, which I have fucking downloaded and listened to almost every other day now, it's like I have no impetus to go back and listen to this ever again after watching this 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 season. I just feel like there's too much shift in how the song plays out. Like, this is another reason why I don't like Creepy Nuts too much is because they always have the exact same formulaic. Like, we'll do rapping, and then we'll do, like, singing, and then we'll do chorus. And it's just like, Do you okay. mean the Nickelback of Japan? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fuck you, too. 
<laughs> wow. No, John, oh. that, John, that John came out yesterday, that. right? John, John mentioned that when we were doing a recording of the Spice and Wolf uh, spoiler cast about how I, I mentioned that a lot of their songs seem very formulaic and how they're laid out. And John's like, Dare you, do you mean to say they're like the Nickelback of Japan? And now every time I think of Creepy Nuts, I'm going to think about John saying that. I hate it. I freaking hate it. Wow. You hate that I'm right? sounds so similar. I hate you. You hate that and now you can't unhear it? That Creepy Nuts is not that great of a band? Wow! I fucking love them, so I don't give a shit. I mean, a lot of people love them. They're very popular. but A lot of people my, like Nickelback. My, yeah, a lot of people do like I Nickelback. I also like Nickelback, so what do you want? I mean, outside of their radio hits, I can't think of any other song I like from Nickelback, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, Rockstar might be the only one that's still being played to this day in top 100 ra uh, song radio stations. And they play Photograph. I've never heard that on the radio. Like, really? Oh, I have. I have. I think it's out. It's of still the... played on like contemporary hit stations. So I listen to. If I do listen to the radio, it's normally going to be like the hits channels, like a top yeah, one hundred, like the top forties, or whatever. Yeah, top one hundred on the Billboard charts, and they just re yeah. play replay the top one hundred. No, I hear it. Uh, and I hear rock star, the... but I don't hear a uh, photograph on the top one mm hundreds. -hmm. Maybe it might be a regional thing. Maybe it is. I know Probably. that here in the South, Nickelback is still pretty popular. I bet Kid Rock is super popular, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily where I live, but in the Bible Belt, yes. <laughs> um, moving on uh, to uh, the ED. Um, if there's one place I can say that this particular season definitely fumbles, it's the ED. There's nothing that special about it to me. I skipped it every single time. I, I listened yeah, to it like, once it was, and watched it once, and that was it. I was like, "This is nothing." Yeah, nothing same. I I didn't like the ED too much because it's visually it's not that striking. It's like it's all not. gray, monotone, black and white, or whatever the fuck it is. Like it's not. It's I get the feeling they're watch. going for. Yeah, it's I, mean, I get the feeling watch, they're going for, and the, the song emotions. itself is not like amazing to listen to. Unlike um, was it Mephisto? Is that what it was called for the first season? You mean? Yeah, for the first season, I think it was Mephisto by Queen Bee. Uh, I believe you're correct. Let me double check that. I want to say that's the song. <laughs> it does not say on Mal. Uh, give me oh. a second. Uh, I was not prepared for this question. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Thought if we were going to talk about a season two, we'd have callbacks to season one. <laughs> yes, it is. It is Mephisto by Queen Bee. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's creepy. I don't know also, why. Mal has something completely different listed. I don't know why. The, the Mal sucks. <laughs> I'm not a proponent of Mal. But I will say... Why does, the, why does Queen Bee invoke such rage in me? Because it's the, also the name of the bad porn producers. Oh, right. That's why it makes me angry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I was like, why do I hate this so much? Yes. Okay, cool. John, John, er, John, he's he's like that. There's a scene from Star Trek Generations where it's like Data's like, "Ooh, I hate this. It is revolting." More, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I'm not sure if you guys have watched the music video for Mephisto from season one. Uh, I did. Uh, no. After it came out, like, but it's been a while. I haven't done it recently. Uh. Essentially, the ED song was made f about uh, uh, the anime. Uh, it's about yeah. a guy who has a stalker because he's an idol, but he also cross dresses and like they're in an abusive relationship. And then the girl eventually kills him, <laughs> stabs him. Oh, and it's just like, hey, look, this is made in response to what Oshinoko is about, which is, mm. you know, we start off season one where it's like. We get this first episode where it's like, dude, holy shit, what just happened? Best girl literally just gets slaughtered in the first fucking episode. We're like, what the hell? Like, I believe believe the most hottest in-demand voice actor gets killed off in the first episode. <laughs> I believe that uh, when they did the character popularity poll, I still ranked like number three. <laughs> Like oh, dead, <laughs> yeah. I I believe they did the character pull around where season two is actually. 
uh, like towards the middle or towards the end of where season two leaves off. They'll do, they did the character character popularity poll, and I ranked number three. And she was like, she hasn't been here for like fifty or so chapters, and people still love her. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. because I I represents a she's not just a character, but she represents the uh, embodiment of like our love for idols, right? The, yeah. The, yeah, the idol, my my number one Oshi. My oh, oh my Oshi Oshi no yeah. Ko. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my Oshi's child. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I I realize I haven't even said the name of the goddamn ED song. It's burning by. Jeez, I'm gonna fucking bungle this name. Hitsuji uh, Bungaku. That. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. My my Nihongo is not Jozu enough to read that all at once. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking vowels in a row. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I, it's just not anywhere near as good as the ED from the first season, I think. Um, and it just leaves no real impression on me. I will say, even though I did skip it, uh, someone in our Discord server, I think it was soon, told us that there is like a change in the ED for one of the episodes toward the end of the season. Um, yeah, they add an extra like frame. And it was like, no. I thought that was a cool uh, thing. Nice because- feature. Essentially, when it gets to the end of the ED, there's a crow, and then it, like, is carrying something. But before we can realize what it's carrying, it glitches out. Yeah. Uh, in the episode where it's revealed, we, when we learn what the crow is carrying, it's actually shown full. And it's like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. cool. It's a nice little a cool, detail. And cool, like, we, we detail. talked about We've talked about that in the past on the podcast, how it is kind of cool when they add little details in episodes for OPs and EDs like that. Yeah, um, just to change like, them up. a They little don't bit. change it too much. It's not like JoJo's where uh, no, where they add sound effects, <laughs> and shit. differences. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where yeah. the ED or the OP gets uh, fucking they, they go into the OP. <laughs> yeah, where the, or where it. the villain takes control of the OP. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, I I was concerned about going into season two of Oshinoko because as I, I'm the only one who reads it uh, on the podcast, yeah. myself and, and Shinoda are anime onlys. And yeah. I was like, man, this is like the most boring part of the the manga to me. Like, there's so much <laughs> yapping and I just don't care. <laughs> that was something I heard from a lot of people who are manga readers going into this. Like, oh, God, it's going to lose a lot of people. Even if you like the first season, you might drop off on this one. <laughs> yeah, because, man, there are a they lot managed of... to adapt it. <laughs> Well, there are a lot of people that were like, Oshinoko fell off because a lot of people after the first fucking episode was like, holy shit, what is this show? And then nothing happens with the whole like, okay, so this idol gets murdered and the kids are reincarnated. Uh, and the, one of the guys, uh, the, the brother is trying to figure out who murdered the mom. And it's yeah. like, okay, cool premise. Yeah. Proceeds to do 12 episodes about nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> nothing related to the murder. Yeah. More like background um, stuff. And there I was is like, stuff in the background going on, but it's mostly just stuff in the foreground of like learning or learning the ins and outs of the entertainment industry. Yeah, yeah and it's like, ooh, it's kind of drip feeding you, but it's not feeding you enough. And I was like, man, if season two is going to cover the Tokyo Blade arc, because I believe season one ends and it shows like Tokyo Blade. Mm. Like, yes, it shows yeah, the a very of what yeah the very very end of season one, like the final scene, is the producer of the. 2.5d stage play talking to the uh the talent agent about casting like aqua and kana in the in the in the pro uh, production yeah so i'm like oh man tokyo blade arc is gonna be pretty bad because it's all just a bunch of nothing (laughs) that happens and (laughs) after you leave off on you know who killed my mom and then you you get this like fake out in season two and it's kind of just like over I was like, it's going to get only interesting towards the end. And I was right. It gets more interesting towards the end because now we get more of the mystery fucking revealed. Like, in season two at the end, we finally see who the dad is. We know, we, yeah. we see a face. Yeah. We're Nothing like, oh, can I say? We just see his face. We don't know who he is still, but we see his face. We're like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's more than we've gotten before. I want to say, going into this as an anime only, something I was thinking about because I knew it was going to be about, like, this whole stage production thing, right? <clears throat> I thought the way it was going to be framed is they were going to spend, like, most of the season, like, preparing for the um, the production itself. 
And then by the end, we would see like like the last episode or two would actually be them showing the production and maybe stuff going on behind the scenes. That's what I thought it was going to be. I Same. was sort of surprised to find out that no, the production starts at like episode six. Um, I mean, well, really, it starts right in the beginning because the first episode of the season were thrust right in the audience as this thing is going on, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, and John I... says that's an anime original thing. Yeah, so Dogo Kobo did a bunch of anime only shit season two. Like the whole framing thing of us being the audience and watching the stage play, that does not happen in the manga. Um, really? In the manga, it literally just has like people yapping, people monologuing. Uh, like it's a lot of Aqua just like having monologue and then characters having monologue and just people like confessing their feelings for certain things. Like, one specific character like melt i believe he gets like three pages in the manga where he talks about how he trained to be a better actor and he's facing off against that other guy uh he gets an actual like half an episode about oh, he him, gets a right? full episode all to himself yeah, is, it, is, it, that, is full, it a full episode it's, it's a, a full, full episode. episode yeah oh well to that they're, character they're doing the uh the, the actual they're acting out the play yeah right? they're, they're doing like the yeah, sword yeah, fight yeah. thing yeah, yeah yeah so he gets a whole episode for that it's three panels yeah. in the fucking manga <laughs> Or three pages, I should say. And so, he's like, he's super self-conscious because he realizes he's not that good of an actor. And yeah, he's when he trying, finally... de he's trying desperately to get better, but he's going up in that particular scene where they're they're showcasing this in this season. He's going up against someone who's a very veteran trained actor. Yeah. So in the manga, basically the story is that uh, Aqua gets recruited for the uh, stage play and. That's kind of the deal. It's like, oh, we're in a stage play. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. So how do I, like, figure out who is in this theater troupe, La La Lai, where my mom used to work at? How do I get to the director? And that's, like, the, the entire producer thing. producer and everyone. Yeah. yeah, he just, well, he wants to get to the guy who runs La La Lai because it's like, maybe he would have information on, like, who my mom was talking to back in the day when she got pregnant. And that's the entire point of this. And, and let's be honest, he wants to test his DNA too. <laughs> well, yeah, he, that too. he's gonna yeah. he's gonna do that because in case that's his dad. Uh, that's the entire like arc, in a nutshell. And the stage play is kind of just like background noise to what Aqua is doing. But yeah. in the anime, they flip the script where now the stage play is kind of the main thing, and Aqua doing center. shit in the background. Yeah, and I'm just like, I I really like the production value that they put into it. Uh, the episodes were. So one of the main, the highlight of the arc is Aqua confronting his fear of why he doesn't want to act. It's like, why is acting always so painful for him? Why does he not think he's a good actor? And that's kind of, that's the highlight of the manga in the arc. But in the anime, they, they fucking really highlighted. Like, they went all yeah. in with the fucking production, the, the effects and PTSD, shit. PTSD, trauma Dude, that they showed so off. good. Oh my God. Wow. Like, is that, is any of that, like, anime original or is that does it go that deep into it in the manga too so in the manga he does go to the director guy um the first director guy that he that was like you're a creepy kid be in my movie <laughs> uh he goes to him and he's like hey how do i act better so that all of that is part of the manga mm -hmm. but like him actually acting it out and being in pain on the voice acting and stuff of aqua yeah. that's all just the anime it's so good. i i I love it, those like they, scenes where he's like doing the introspection and he's like talking to his own id. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like his his ego talking to his id, and like it's the, first of all the animation in those scenes is great because it all looks like these. It, it almost like it's drawn by a child, mm -hmm. um, and like those scenes are so good. And the voice acting where he's basically talking to himself is so. Oh my god! Yes, please more of this. During this arc, the voice acting that all the performers did was beyond fantastic i mean they yeah. really brought to light all of them and i'm just like wow you guys like as john said i've heard a couple of things about how this uh this is one of the mo uh, more boring arcs but i didn't experience that at all i was just like holy shit from the visuals to the voice acting top fucking notch yeah like the whole yeah. uh so when we get to the stage before we even start the stage play like training arc they have an issue of, oh shit, the stage play might not even happen because the creator of the stage play fucking hates the stage play that is and being that, presented. Oh 
that's something I loved. I love the fact that this is actually part of it because it's something I've always wondered, especially about like adaptations of manga and light novels that get like adapted into anime, stage plays, all this other stuff. I always suspect, though I never know because Japanese people are generally too nice to say anything negative about stuff being done for them. Um, that I think a lot of mangaka and light novel authors and stuff, I don't think a lot of them enjoy the adaptations of their work. Yeah. I don't so know. It's just a feeling I've we always have, had. Um, so in the first season, we had Sweet Today getting adapted, and it was mm. a complete shit show because it's like the producers of the of Sweet Today were like, yeah, we're doing this to push the hotties in our model group, which Melt yeah. is part of, right? And yeah. again, nice callback. Melt's coming back, but now he wants to be an actual better actor instead of just being like a shitty actor who looks good. Being the pretty face. <laughs> being a pretty face. And that's why, like, having that callback to him and him having his own episode, it's like, it's it's great. It's it's I love that. I love that continuity between the two seasons. It's so good. Uh, but watching the creator of the uh, Tokyo Blade just, like, absolutely lose her shit be like, this is fucking trash. I hate this. This is not a great adaptation. Throw it out. <laughs> Throw it out. And then, it, like, it shits all over the guy who's supposed to, the screenplay writer who interpreted the, the original yeah. works of art. And it, it shows you a peek into, like, the difference between a movie director and a book writer. Mm -hmm. Just because you wrote the book and the book is well received does not mean you can fucking direct the movie. Yeah. I love Stanley Kubrick. There is, mm -hmm. I, I love The Shining. I think Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is amazing. I, I don't think I'm movie. alone in that opinion. I think it's a it is, very popular it's, opinion. It's a yeah, phenomenal it movie. Is. I think most, most of Stanley Kubrick's movies are pretty damn good. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I agree. But St apparently Stephen King didn't share the same opinion and said, man, I hated The Shining, <laughs> Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. It fucking sucked. I'm going to go make my own TV version. And that fucking blew. <laughs> it was garbage. It was. It was awful. <laughs> and it goes to show, like, you know, the medium in which you present media needs to be adapted for that. Yes. Because we talked about this with uh, in our uh, Spice and Wolf spoiler cast where it's like, you know, Spice and Wolf did really well because it took its time to explain stuff because there's a lot of world building involved. And I think a lot of animes would do better if they did that, where they took the yeah. time to explain. However, it's like, for example, uh, Overlord is coming out with a new movie that covers two volumes. And it's going to oh, be it's like two a, volumes. Well, the Holy Kingdom arc is two volumes, part one, part two. Okay. Yeah, it's like 13 and 14, I think. 11, 12? Whatever numbers they were. I it's covering forget. two whole volumes worth of material, though. It's covering two whole volumes, but the two volumes are part one, part two of the exact same t arc. It's a two-volume arc. Okay. Uh, that happens twice in Overlord. Because there's the, the elf one afterwards. But um, it's going to be two hours long, which translates to, if we're talking 20 minutes per episode maybe six episodes worth right roughly yeah roughly which is like to me that's not enough time to express what happens in unless the two hour long movie is only going to be about part one i actually don't know i just know it's about it could holy, be it's, it says it's the holy kingdom arc and as far as i know holy kingdom arc has two parts <laughs> volume uh 12 and 13 or whatever it is or 11 and 12 i, I mean they could just be calling it that now for the fact that they're gonna say that it's gonna be to be continued at the end of the movie for a second movie yeah, but books that have a lot of world building, things that have a lot of things to say, need more time to breathe. Uh, in Oshinoko, the manga, it doesn't have a lot of time to breathe itself in the manga, and the, the anime producers were like, we should let this breathe. Like, let them cook. Yeah. And boy, did it fucking cook. That shit came out fucking fantastic. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I'm so surprised at how much I liked the anime because I remember... Before I started the first episode, uh, I tried to start it when we were in L.A. when it first aired. And I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, this is the Tokyo Blade stage play arc. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of yapping. It's a lot of just boring shit. Because the first three episodes are pretty boring, in my opinion, of season two. Because uh, it yeah. follows the I same. I think it's boring. But it, well, I think it's okay. I, I say starting off with having yourself in the audience was pretty cool, though. For the actual I thought that production. was a cool framing that was cool. device. But I'm saying, like, oh, it's just going to follow the same. It's basically, it looks like it's going to be adapted like season one, which is essentially a shot for shot remake of the manga. Like yeah. panel by panel remake of the manga. 
Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to, it's not being presented in any different way. That is until we get to like episode five or six where it's like, just switch up. <laughs> we're we're I, I changing would, all would, of it. <laughs> like, I would Whoa. agree with John. I would agree with John that of the, all the episodes in this season, the first three are probably the least entertaining overall. Um, but once you get into episode four of this season, I think is really when the plot of the arc really takes off, especially once you have the, the manga character come in and sort of just upturn everything. Oh yeah. And I, I love that part. Uh, Cause it's like, <laughs> she's like, I hate the adaptation by uh, the, the dude Abe or whatever his name was. So she's Listen, like, there's fucking, so many names. The stage play there's, director. Yeah, bro. Yeah. There's so many names going on in or this, in this, this anime. I cannot keep up with all of them. This, I'm just calling every writer. character by what they do. <laughs> yeah. The screenplay writer. So that, uh, she says, fuck it. I'll write it myself. And she writes it herself. And it's like completely garbage. It would never work. And it's because they show like, like when Aqua is like, I don't think a stage play is that like, it's, is it half movie? It's half rom- uh, dramatic, um, fucking live action role playing whatever and then he goes and watches it and it blows his fucking mind because it's like it's more immersive than you thought and that's what changed his opinion about like how it's supposed to be done so he comes up with the idea of like we can save this by making her my making the mangaka go watch one of the uh stage play adaptations of a different novel that she likes and then she watches it and she's blown away by it and it turns out it's the same screenplay writer and then she's yeah. like, okay, so that's what she has actually... to eat crow and be like, okay, maybe you do know what you're doing. <laughs> and well, cause a lot of it was just miscommunication between the actual creator of the manga mm-hmm. and the person who has to adapt it because they show you the chain of command where it's like, okay, she needs to talk to her publisher who then needs to talk to the screenplay writers, um, like department who then talks to the screenplay writer. We're playing a game of telephone here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's literally telephone. In, f- in fact, like, that's the name of that episode, by the way. It's the title yeah, of that episode, like, it's, Game of Telephone. It's, well, it's no one's fault because as the creator of the manga of your property, intellectual property, you want it to be translated as closely to however you wrote it. Yeah, as your vision as possible. And fun fact, that's why um, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey is like really bad at some parts and really good at some parts. <laughs> 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 the really bad parts of 50 shades of gray are basically what the creator of 50 shades of gray would not budge on and was like we need to keep it and the really well-written parts that seem like hey this looks like a good movie was actually done by the director who would have thought <laughs> sometimes thought? directors know what they're doing because yeah. <laughs> it might be just their job or something yeah, and it, my it, this, learning of this is is John watch Fifty Shades of Grey, and I'm like, bro. What? Well, we've talked about this on multiple yeah. occasions on the podcast. How he's watched Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Oh God, I don't remember this. <laughs> um, poor man. But one thing, this is one thing I I really appreciated about the second season though is the stuff with the mangaka and showing like the process of adapting and how it's each each medium that you adapt for has its own unique challenges. Yeah, right. and even even Aqua doesn't even realize this until he goes and watches a stage play because it's like I know about theater, I know the vagaries, like the idea of theater, but I don't know what actually goes into it. And then he goes and watches it, and he's like, "Oh, okay, now it all kind of clicks. It is very, very different." <laughs> well, this relates to uh, anime and stuff too. So a lot of people don't understand that for voice acting, uh. God rest his soul, but it's all Robin Williams' fault, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do go on. Go, go on. <laughs> Robin Williams fucking just set back the voice acting industry by like 50 years because he was so good at being Robin Williams, and they created Genie to be Robin Williams. Like, that's how they pitched the idea to Robin Williams because when they when Disney approached Robin Williams, they're like, hey, we want you to play Genie. He's like, nah. And then the... um. Anime, uh, anime makers. <laughs> I guess it's technically anime, right? Animators, American. yeah. The animators. animators basically made Genie do a skit from like one of Robin Williams' show, showed that to him, and he absolutely loved it. So he was like, I'm on board. I'll be Genie. Yeah. But people think that acting should be like done by professional actors because it's like, well, they're actors. So they, they know how to play characters. It's like, yes, but that's only because 
they crafted that character to be specifically played by someone. Yeah. So for a lot of voice acting, you aren't going to be the one that they're making. You have to become what they want you to become. Yeah. And that's seen here where once the, uh, the screenplay writer and the mangaka finish writing their script, it's like, it's perfect. It would get everything conveyed perfectly, but they didn't yeah. think about the, uh, technical skill level required to pull this shit off it's not yeah. like every single person in here is going to be an amazing fucking actor god knows melt isn't so nope. that's how it segues into the next part where now we're getting into the actual like people practicing and then you have like your geniuses and shit like you have kana um arma kana who's like an amazing uh actor then you have like uh i oh my god akane Akane. Yeah, I was like, Akane, ISA. And yeah. I was like, no, it's not ISA. <laughs> <laughs> ISA is the other part of uh, Yoasobi. Uh, Akane, <laughs> who's also a, a prodigy, right? A genius actor. And then we have uh, the other guy who's like from La La Lai, who's an amazing actor. He's like, he's just. He's like a veteran. Almost. He's a veteran freaking theater actor. So it's like, oh, the yeah, we, number one. Yeah, so we have like genius actors who can play off of each other, who can na definitely nail their part. Then we have people like Melt, who are shitty actors, or people like Aqua, who can't get into this type of emotional acting so mm -hmm. then we get to see them like it, it all builds on each other like that's what i liked about the second season quite a lot instead of just being like the manga which is just panel next panel next panel next panel and we're just exposit 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 keep going lots we're of running bubble stop bubbles yeah. everywhere we're just fucking going through the story here we're actually watching things build together build upon each other and it gets presented in such an awesome way because god damn is the animation fucking in fire dude holy know. shit they stepped everything up in season two i am so glad that this is how they decided to present it because it's it made me excited to watch the next episode of each week because yeah. again going into this i had such low expectations because i knew the manga series like what it was going to go through i'm like oh, you had god, the curse they... of, of future knowledge yeah well yeah. because again most of the time people ad you know adapting the source material frame by frame is a good thing most sometimes time. but when people read that and they say we can make this better and they do make it better like that's so rare it's so rare for anime to do that that's why i, I never expect and it to extremely happen. difficult to do and extremely difficult bro like bro it is it is crazy to me especially as long as i have been watching anime how often i have wanted that and now in the same goddamn season we've had two examples of that of just well put together uh, anime adaptations of source material that at the very least match their source material in terms of quality if not perhaps slightly exceed it yeah i know and like... that's this <laughs> and the spice and wolf remake yeah so for me i i just feel like the season was so good and, and it finishes out the tokyo tokyo blade arc uh mm. and <laughs> i was just like oh man at the end of Tokyo Blade is when it gets super hype and we're going to end on the cliffhanger and everyone's going to fucking hate it. Just like <laughs> season one, everyone's going to hate it. Because yeah. god dang cliffhangers. Yeah, it, it's funny because the first season has what I call like a like four to five m mini arcs. Whereas this one really, there's only, there. I mean, really there's only one arc through the whole season. I kind of split it up into two arcs because the first 10 episodes really all revolve around the production of Tokyo Blade. And then the last... Uh, last 11 episodes 11 through 13 um really are the aftermath or the the r and r i call yeah i call it the r and r arc because it's like okay the production is done we're wrapping down we're settling down it's like okay we're gonna go off and do our own things now but before that let's go have a little trip <laughs> yeah so at the end of the tokyo blade arc we find out uh, aqua finds his half brother uh the the top actor from la la lie is apparently his half brother. It's like holy shit, we shared the same father. So yes. he goes to him and is like, "Hey, you're my half brother." It's like, "Who's your dad?" And who is your daddy? And what does he do? <laughs> so we learn that his dad apparently is now dead, uh, because the top lullaby actor's dad committed suicide with his wife or something like, I don't know, years ago, years, years, yeah. and years ago. So before Aqua sudden, would have been old enough to even do anything about it. Yeah, so now yeah. Aqua, instead of having, like, the, the dark eye for revenge, it's reverted back to, like, light because she's not consumed by revenge anymore. And it's like, we're finally seeing a closure on this chapter of his life 
the, but when he expresses that, he starts that, moving on. Yeah, yeah, he starts to move on because he's finally like able to let go. And then when he expresses that to um, Akane, she's just like, "That doesn't make sense." And then she starts going freaking like thousand IQ brain freaking figures out like, "Wait, there's one possibility he's overlooking." And then we actually see like who the the dad is actually still alive. Their real father is still alive, and he's not who you would expect. And it's just like, oh, yeah. more mystery! Like, oh, this is the exciting shit. We're finally John. getting back to the the roots. <laughs> John, let's be honest. That's not like a ten thousand IQ play by Akane. That's just called autism. <laughs> <laughs> she probably is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. She kind of looks like she might have a bit of autism just by how she acts. So just saying. I a touch do of really autism. like her. I really like Akane. I think she's actually like the best pairing for Aqua. Um, my favorite, Bro, is you Mem. know, what I the, love Memcho. The, the, Memcho is like my favorite. I was gonna say, favorite. you know, what the the tragedy of the season is that Memcho is basically non-existent. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's kind of sad. <laughs> Why is Memcho Mem so good? She's so like wholesome and every. I love her. I love her so much. She's fun. I, that's is it because why. she's an older woman and she's all around <laughs> these kids? I don't know. Maybe. I like how there's older that than scene. Her. I I am older than her, which is shocking. Um. No, there's that scene where they're at like the 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 resort town or, or whatever it is, and she's like, "Yeah, they all have to stop by 10 p.m., but I don't have to because I'm not a minor." <laughs> yeah, there's child labor laws in Japan. <laughs> it's like, but it's fine. I'm 22. I think she's um, like 20. She's like 25 actually. Or no, she's I think she's, she's 27. Like 26. 26. I think she's 26 or 27. 27? Yeah. She's old. <laughs> she's well, my age. Because perfect. There was, there, she, there, actually, there was she actually, should be 27 now. Yeah, because there was that thing that she was talking about uh, near the middle of the season where there's like a cutaway to um, what uh, Kana and uh, right, Ruby well, and Memcho right. are doing is their, their their idol group that they're they're doing, and um, she's talking about how she wonders how long she can actually stay with them because she's going to be thirty soon, and being thirty as an idol is not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's not yeah. many uh, thirty plus year old idols in Japan. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, there are some, but it's not like super common. Most of them are in their twenties or teens. I'm gonna go find a sixty five year old idol right now. I'm, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying they're not common. Uh, but it's something she genuinely worries about. It's like this is cool. I'm having fun. I like this a lot. I like these friends that I have now. But realistically, I'm about to be thirty very soon. How long can I keep this up? <laughs> right. Yeah. Which um, for her, I guess she's got the whole YouTube thing she can fall back on. Oh, no, absolutely. But that's also kind of uh, related to her idol stuff, so... Yeah, is, it, maybe. is it crazy to either of you that they don't bother to use any faux name brand stuff in this? They always say, like, YouTube, uh, Instagram. I think that's part of the appeal. Like, I, I, I think it is, too. Reality. I think it is too, but it's just, it's weird for me after years of seeing fake name brand stuff in anime. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like this last little part of this season. Um, not just because we're getting like some answers to the mystery a little bit, but because it it's like a chance to see these characters as people and not just as entertainers. Well, what I really like is the fact that we're finally getting back to the the roots of like who done it, right? Who done it? Yeah, this is how it the all started. Element. Like you this get how to it see, all started. You you see other sides of them here and there, but then it immediately goes. We're moving on to the next part, and here's we're going the, back here's to this entertainment reveal. industry stuff. Yeah. Well, what so, was super crazy is like the the switch up, right? Like now that we have um, so for whatever reason. <laughs> Aqua decides to use and abuse his girlfriend, uh, her power of tism, <laughs> to figure out where his old body is. Because they they go to the R and R arc, they go to the town in which the twins were born, but also where the doctor was when he died. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he even goes he back uses, to that same hospital. Yeah, looking to give answer to give um Akane like clues to figure out where could the body possibly be or something. Uh, even though it wasn't her that figured out where the body was, it was actually uh, it was Ruby. Ruby. Well, well, it was complete accident. 
Well, was, um, oh, Ruby chasing right. the crow. <laughs> yeah. Was it an accident, bro? Was yeah. We meet the creepy Sukiyomi character at the end. Was it really an accident? Yeah. yeah I, I'm just like, what the fuck was up with all that? But I'm oh, sure you'll that's learn later. Well, yeah. there, so this is the part where the the story gets even, like obviously it was already a wild story because it had reincarnation in the yeah the, the genre, right? Yeah. But yeah, now yeah. we're introduced to a new character who's like, who's who's this creepy young child followed around by crows? What's uh, with this sassy young child? <laughs> I don't remember what her name was supposed to be. It's not Amaterasu, I, is it? It's no. not said, is they it? Didn't, they didn't say it. I think they her name is... It. I'm trying to remember what her name is in the manga. I mean, she's unless just, she has the name of one of those shrine deities they mentioned. I don't think she's like... I think her name is Tsukiyomi or something. I think that's what her name uh. is. But we don't know the name of the child yet. I, I, I'm just assuming her name was Tsukiyomi because that's what I can just think of off of the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, who is this child? Why does she know what she knows? Uh, and, you know, now that Aqua has found his dead body, it's like, okay, someone finally found my body. I can finally, like, move on, move past. And then him and uh, Akane kiss. And I'm like, yes. Yes, Akane's the best girl for you. God damn it, Aqua. <laughs> Can I just Don't say you it was dare funny? fumble this. It, it it was funny with Kana. Like the whole reason she wanted him to go on the trip with them at all was to get just closer to, get to one him. On and, one time. and then yeah. she gets cucked. <laughs> and it's like Kana suffers. It's where the relationship actually gets solidified. It's it's like John, forever cucked. <laughs> John, a blue haired girl's gonna win. Oh my what god! What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! This is this is not possible. This is not happening. <laughs> Yeah, so we have all that. But then after uh, Ruby finds out, like, the doctor that she's fallen in love with has actually been dead this entire time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we as the audience know that the the girl, Ruby, is uh, Sana? Was her name? The I sick believe? girl from the first episode. The <laughs> sick girl from the first episode. And we know that the doctor is the older brother. And it's like they know each other, but they don't know each other. Uh, but... Yeah, so now Ruby, like, finds the dead body. It's like, oh, shit, Goro-sensei's fucking dead. And now she's, like, she... It, her lights turned her, black. Now she's the world, on the path for revenge. Her world crumbled around her. Like, yeah. you could see it visually. Like, and, uh, uh, like the, the light going out of her eyes when she sees it, it's like, oh, God, she's about to... She's gonna crack! <laughs> yeah, so now we have a, a script change where... Now she, Ruby's the one out for revenge, and she looks like she's on the dark side. And Aqua's trying to, to move say, past it. I have to say, watching like the life go out of Ruby's eyes when she saw the dead body, fucking immaculate. I mean, that was lighting, well animated. The animation yeah. just beautiful. I've I've watched a soul leave out of that girl, and I was like, wow, that's yeah. amazing. So this part was in the manga, like all of it was basically adapted frame by frame. And I was like, this is the impactful shit. And this is why I was like, the ending's going to be really great. And I was right. It was really great. <laughs> and now we're like, holy shit, what's happening? And uh, then we get to the very end end of the last episode where we actually finally see the reveal of the dad's face. And it's like, holy shit. He looks exactly like Aqua. They got the same cool. eyes. Well, he has the, yeah, like, all these stars have those star eye patterns or whatever. Yeah. But his are completely darkened. Yeah. Like, he has the, the black little star eyes instead of the white ones because he's, you know, yeah. consumed by the darkness of the industry. It's all a yeah. um, euphemism? Is that the word? Symbology? I don't know. Symbolism? Euphemism? Symbolism? It's, it's not a euphemism. Represent, representation of? Yeah, representation of the dark side of the industry. Yeah. Where he literally murdered another up-and-coming actor. Actor yeah. pushes her off yeah. the cliff and lets her die. And he's just like, Yo, so I'm assuming, I'm, I'm assuming at this point they're setting this person up to be like an actual serial killer. Well, before we get to that, uh, we see like a flash forward. So after the end of this arc, the R and R arc, as we named it, it, we flash forward six months. So there is a time skip, and now we're That's entering the after the end credit game. sequence at the end of the last episode, right? Yeah, we, we're in the end game now, boys. And mm. this part is where everything just goes fucking buck wild. It's about the 15 year lie. That's mm. we, we see a little screenshot of that, of someone writing something called the 15 year lie. Mm -hmm. And this is, so this next season, 
I think it might be the last season if they do is when they do a really season three, already. Yeah, it, the 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 fifteen year lie arc is basically the end. Oh, okay. Um, if they I wanted thought... to stretch this out to four seasons, they could, but it'd be another fucking cliffhanger thing before like the epilogue happens. But ah, uh, the... they're just gonna do three seasons in a movie. Come on. <laughs> If they do three seasons in a movie, that that could work. But in my opinion, it goes really fast from where they leave off in Tokyo Blade. Like, mm. Tokyo Blade leaves off at, like, what, chapter 60, 70 or something of the uh, manga? You're going to tell us because we don't know. <laughs> I don't remember, actually, what number, where it leaves off. I'd have to read it again to figure out where it leaves off. But essentially, the next part is the second half of the manga. Okay. It's a long while. It's a long part. But this is the final arc. Everything yeah, is gonna. It's the end. Culminate. The second part is the end game. Yes. Okay. Like, so it's really they, a story told in two parts. Well, if they split it up into two parts, right? The first part before the last, the fifteen year lie, is basically what happens in the in between before the truth comes out. Gotcha. And then the truth comes out arc. Is essentially what I'm going to call it without. I to spoil I think anything. I think based on what you've said, I would not be surprised if they did three seasons and finished it off with a movie. John Tokyo Blade takes place on volume five through seven. Um, rehearsals start at forty one. Opening night goes to sixty six. And then the R and R is like seventy something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's like a hundred and seventy chapters out. <laughs> Okay. Which is part of the fifteen year lie. So it's a so we've like got, I said So we've got we're halfway a hundred we've got roughly a hundred chapters left to go, more or less. Yeah. So they if they wanted to split it up into like fifty fifty, they could. Uh and okay. I, I know how they would do that split. Basically before the before the reveal and then the reveal and afterwards. Then maybe it will be four seasons. And just have four seasons of equal length, roughly equal length in terms of episode count. Well, I feel like they could condense a lot of it. I don't but know. Add, you've seen that Doga Kobo can do really good That's with anime true. only stuff. That's true. They did add in a lot of fluff and made it a lot better. So if they if if Doga Kobo continues to make the season three and season four, they could definitely make it a lot better. But mm. uh we're in the end game now, boys. And I can I just <laughs> say like damn is this good. <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, I will say there were a couple of things about this particular season that I didn't appreciate that much. Um, one of them, and this might be a hot take. I don't know. Um, I don't like a lot of the stuff with the Kana love triangle stuff. It seems kind of soap opera. -y. I don't know. Yeah. It just a hundred percent is, but I kind of dig it. I mean, I guess if you really like Kana a lot, sure. I just don't find her to be that interesting of a character particularly as a as a love interest for aqua okay um i find akane to be way better suited to be a love interest for aqua than anything um i don't know i just that part i didn't care about like the whole thing with them going on a, a date to get the suitcase it's like all this seems like so useless <laughs> <laughs> all for it her just seems like to the end. shit huh <laughs> All for Kana to get cucked in the end. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It, it uh, seems a little forced. It seems a little soap opery, and it's like, eh, I could really go without it, and I think you wouldn't. If you went without it, I don't think much would be lost in terms I of the overall plot. I have a feeling that it, unless, it's not wasted space. Unless something's coming in the future. I don't know. Um, I could tell you why, but it would be spoilers, so I'm yeah. not going to say shit. <laughs> no spoilers in the spoiler cast. <laughs> At least not for not part future three or yeah. yeah part three and part four yeah. no <laughs> that's future um, content that I can hold on to but and maybe and you know what maybe my opinion of it will change with that I don't know just from my own knowledge right now I personally didn't care for that that much um, also the lack of mem show in the season is appalling <laughs> right yes it is absolutely <laughs> appalling can we Alex. get a fucking mem show spinoff please. <laughs> Alex, so I, I will say, I, I, I see where you're coming from in terms of Kana, but I have to say, they they don't waste space in this show. They don't just mm. pointlessly show something, in my opinion. Like, it's... I, things have served its purpose. 
I that's the only thing I can hope for going forward. Um, I'm hoping whatever it is doesn't get cut out um, because Togo Kobo has done a phenomenal job with this anime adaptation so far, by all accounts. They don't um, cut. They add. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't cut. They add. Um, but that was really one part of this particular season that I really didn't enjoy as much as an anime only watcher. Um, another thing I really didn't enjoy all that. Well, and the, besides the fact there's no Mimcho, uh, was the fact that, and this is again, might be a hot take. I hope that this like Sukuyomi character doesn't end up becoming like a big thing because like, I'm okay with there being some parts of this mystery you don't answer. Like, if she's the reason that they got reincarnated, okay, just don't show me. I don't care. You can leave that a mystery. I don't need to know why. I, I need know. to that's know my, everything. I need to know every single thing. Show me. That's my own personal opinion. I think that there's a lot of stuff, not just in this, but in storytelling in general, where people tend to over-explain the mystery to where it becomes uninteresting to me. I'm I'm perfectly willing to just like hand wave the whole thing. It's like oh a supernatural thing that they reincarnated and would move on. We never mention it ever again. I'm willing to just hand wave that for I... the sake of having a good mystery. So they don't touch on that like character too much. Okay. Outside of like one specific chapter, I guess. Um, okay. Where it's like you could, we'll learn the reason why the crow is talking to even cares about uh, sensei and uh, the girl. Okay, like there's I, I one just, specific my, thing. My fear That's is it. just that they're gonna over-explain the mystery a little bit, and then it just loses its luster. No, it's okay they, they don't. They don't explain the mystery at all. It's like it's like literally, it's gonna show the scene of like why Sukiyomi even cares about. Okay, what happened? Why like, why uh, the, that, that, they these two characters were reincarnated? That that's that's fine. I just just don't over explain it because something it's okay. I mean, to they don't they don't explain nothing else outside of like this is how the Tsukiyomi knows the two characters that get reincarnated. That's all they explain. It is perfectly okay. okay in your mystery story to leave some things up to interpretation and not explain everything. Please don't explain everything. <laughs> that's but what I want going forward. I feel like when they do eventually do a season three. Hopefully, well, they, they are going three. to. They've announced it. They they already okay. announced it. Yeah. Um. With what they're going to cover, I feel like I know where they're going to end off at for season three. I'm gonna call it the big reveal. Hmm. And this is and this is assuming they only do another like eleven, twelve episode arc or yeah. season. Okay. Because they haven't. All they've announced is that it's being made. They haven't announced anything else about it. How many episodes it's going to be? When it's going to be airing? I mean, I feel like they should just do 24 episodes, split core. Just finish yeah. it off. Or just do a season, season three, three, season four, with 12 episodes each. No, I think it should just be 24 continuous episodes. I mean, they could do that, too. I mean... Or if they need time, I guess, split the core. But, like, yeah, it's like such a Michelle marathon Tensei. to the end. I, I don't want them to stop in between, because that just makes me more upset. And like, God damn it, we're so close to the end game. Or what if they did like a 24 episode season where they did 12 episodes, take a season off and then 12 more episodes. Yeah. Split core. Like yeah. That, that would work. Yeah. That but way I you're not having to be... wait a year and a half, two years for the next season. Yeah. If they could do it this last season, season three as a split core where it's like comes out in spring and then the next one comes out in fall. I would love that. Yeah. Quite frankly, uh, me personally, I don't give a shit. Just give me it in quality. Do whatever you need. Yeah. Just give me the Take quality. Take your time. Take your time. Well, I just feel like because of how pacing, the pacing is going to be, because like I said, the last half is one giant fucking thing. Like, yeah. I, I would hate to see it split up. We yeah. just like kill the hype. <laughs> like You finally yeah. built some hype back up, Oshinoko. You can't <laughs> lose it, please. <laughs> no. If if they do that, I, I hope they go the the uh, Mashoku Tensei route, where they just do a twelve episodes, take a season off, then do another twelve episodes. Yeah. Or just all twenty four at, at, at a stretch. Do that too, I guess, if you can. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it, regardless. Um, I still probably won't read this because i actually want to find out what happens <laughs> yeah i want to keep the anime only surprise I, I 
I might actually go back and read this once the anime finishes, and because uh, it's gonna obviously gonna be a complete adaptation, um, just to see what differences there are, because I am curious to see just how much was added into the anime. Um, I guess unless anyone has anything else to add, um, we can give our scores. I said all I wanted oh. to say. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess, uh, with Shonoto, what do you give this out of 10 this season? Initially, I scored it a 7 out of 10, but I kept on thinking about it, and I'm like, wow, I really enjoyed this season. So 8 out mm. of 10 for the finish. Okay. John? I personally think it's an 8 out of 10, but I gave it a 9 out of 10 because... Uh, Doga Koba, Kobo, Doga Kobo, Koba, Doga, <laughs> Doga, Doga Kobo. There we go. The animation studio did a bang up job with the season. It turned one again, my the part that I think is the most boring into a super interesting watch that made me want to watch it every week. Like I was like, I need my Oshinoko fix this week. Like, Oh man, what's going to happen next Get week? Get it in there. Get it fucking in there. <laughs> have to do an adaptation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's freaking great. It's crazy so. doing recording this after we've, uh, John and I recorded our spice and wolf thing. It's just, it's so refreshing to see such passionately made anime adaptations of source material that both of us love. Yeah, like Oshinoko Season 2 and Spice and Wolf Remake are phenomenal adaptations. And you can like tell I, there's a lot of love behind the people that are making this. It's honestly very surprising to see uh, <laughs> two anime this year. Just The adaptations are fucking... Spic Airing oh. side by side. <laughs> I guess technically Free Run would have been a really good one as well too. but Because that one yeah. technically ended in like January, right? No, it ended in uh, April. April. Yeah. yeah. Because it started, it started in the fall. I think it. I uh -huh. think it ended April. Maybe it was in March. Let me double check that. I could be wrong. Oh, it may have been March because it was a, it was a two core anime, but it aired yeah, continuously. It was. Um, yeah, Free yeah. Run also ended this year. That is an adaptation that is obviously made with a lot of love. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's surprising <laughs> after so many years of just like meh anime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when did the anime adaptation ended? Ended March 22nd of 2024. Okay. So, yeah, it did end earlier this year. Um, it is, again, as someone who's been watching anime, especially seeing anime adaptations get made year after year, I got so used to seeing so many of them just simply be made to shill the source material and nothing else. So many half-assed adaptations... Uh, single season adaptations of something where it has a bullshit go read the source material ending. Um, it's great to not only see so many anime getting made now that are number one, complete adaptations of source material, but also so lovingly made by people who are not just there to make something for the sake of making something, but making something because they want to make that specific thing. is very refreshing. I like oh, that when you have at this point, that we're at this place in the anime industry now <laughs> well when you have a lot of people who are passionate about making a great adaptation it's gonna sell more books it's gonna sell yeah. more source material like if i didn't and already go read oshinoko after this season i would go fucking read oshinoko <laughs> like yeah you sold and me another on another thing another thing that a lot of a lot of people uh in industry stride side don't consider word of mouth like, you put something good like this out there, you'll get people like us who are hardcore weebs talking about it and spreading the word about it and showing it constantly Free advertisement. for we years start it, on yeah. end. I mean, I mean, years on end. What do you think this, this spoiler cast is? It's free fucking advertising for the In anime. The yeah. And it's like... You put out quality product like this, and it's like, we're going to keep on talking about it, and we're going to keep on putting the sales on it. And it's like, just keep doing quality like this. We'll we'll buy it. Um, so I ended up giving this particular season of Oshinoko an 8 out of 10. Um, I do think that it is on par with uh, the first season in a lot of ways. 
Uh, I gave that a 9 out of 10, mostly because of its absolutely phenomenal first episode. I don't think there's ever been a first episode of an anime that cooked me quite so thoroughly <laughs> as uh, the first episode of Oshinoko. Um, but I will say I might have to go back and revisit this score if um, in the future season or seasons um, my uh, kind of gripes with the whole stuff with Kana and the mystery surrounding like the Tsukiyomi character, if that gets addressed in a way I like, then I will go back and probably give this a 9 out of 10, mostly because I'll see it now as genuinely good uh, foreshadowing. It was part of the plot. It was part of the plot all along. It was the plot. You mean the plot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, again, I really liked it. I think the season is very, very good. Great adaptation. Um uh, even from John, who's a big stickler for source uh, material adaptations, even he was impressed by it. So you know it's damn good if John is impressed by it. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm a good metric. <laughs> like I, I like Isekai, bro. Like what? <laughs> yeah, but you also read a lot and you watch a lot of stuff that that gets adapted. That's true. Uh, you also I mean, will my, say if it's trash. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even for I, all I the isekai objective, you watch, you know, like all the isekai you watch, you will at least point out, even if you like it personally, you'll still point out if it's trash. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I feel like if you're saying that this is a really good adaptation, then it's a really good adaptation. <laughs> now, I want to ask last question for John specifically before we before we sign off here. In terms of an adaptation, do you think this matches the quality of the source material, or does it enhance it? Ooh. So. I think that season one it was basically adapted like frame by frame, uh, which is like on a technical um, rating. Yeah, it's a great adaptation because it follows the the book right away. Mm -hmm. uh, season two does not follow the book because it has a bunch of anime only things, but I think it enhances the story. So okay, in terms of like adaptation, it is a great adaptation because it did retain all of the original things. It didn't change anything. It just enhanced it. And that's what I always want. If you're going to change anything, like if you're going to do anything to a source material, at least just enhance it. Don't, don't yeah. change shit and like retcon shit unless you have good reason. Cause I, I've come to terms with the fact like the last of us live action is a great adaptation in my opinion, but they changed quite a lot, but it made sense for what they had to change. Yeah. And so, it gave extra flavor text to the stuff that was already there. Yeah, if, if you're going to change anything about a really good source material, you better have a damn good reason to do it, and it better make yeah. sense. Exactly. Don't just do it just to do it. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, with all that being said, I think that is a great place to end it. Um, thank you, everyone, for stopping by to watch our spoiler cast of Oshino Co. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff if you like what you saw and want to see more. Let us know down below what you thought of this season of Oshino Co. and if you're looking forward to season three. Um, also, check down below where you can find links to all the stuff Anime Club After Dark does. There's also a link down there to our merch store where you can purchase Anime Club After Dark merch if you want to support us that way. With all that being said, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. All right, don't die in the hurricanes. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I gotta finish getting ready. I gotta board up some shit and get water and be like Gunga Din carrying water across the house. <sighs> Florida, am I right? <laughs> <laughs>